Oh, there we are. We're streaming. I'll go ahead and tell the world. Because everybody wants to know. Streaming. Uh, unreal. Doing very basic stuff. I upgraded my version of Unreal. Um, I was playing around with version. Not version control exactly, but having multiple versions of Unreal installed on my machine because I wanted to try a plugin that was only available on Unreal from three years ago for some reason. Um, but uh, it turns out that that really screws things up. Like all my uh, links were broken and stuff, so let me just make some noise while I clean my glasses here. Uh, so I'm a little bit late because I had to clean all that shit up. But now it's all cleaned up, and I'm on the most recent version of Unreal for this project, which absolutely, definitely requires the best Unreal can offer. Um, but uh, the core issue is that uh, we have a whole bunch of really boring shit to do. And uh, that's the problem with learning a new engine. At the core, what you're really doing is you're uh, considering whether, you know, you, you, have to, you have to actually learn shit. And that means it's slow going, especially if you're not following tutorials. There's no tutorials for what I want to do. So we're going to have to do it on our own. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up some uh, Blender because the first thing I want to do is fix our um, shadow problems. And those are all related to the Blender file. I made a video about it. There we are. So... Um, I was working on these hull shapes and getting them to work in Unreal, and I found out some disastrous news. Solidify doesn't actually help um, because the the ridges end up being completely broken in lighting. So in order to apply the Solidify modifier, I have to apply it here in uh, in Blender. How do I move it to the top? Uh, one of these buttons moves it to the top. Can I drag it to the top? I can. Okay. And we can just apply it. That seems to have worked. And in theory, we can just uh, set this up so that it has all the things it needs to have. Oh, that's not going to be right, though, because it's scaled. There we are. Just unscale it. No biggie. And basically, we're just going to go through and repeat the process. Um, it's not that big a deal. We're just going to make everything complex. What is this? I don't know what this means. Does that lock it? No, it just makes it orange. Does that mean it's like a key? No, it's a link? What's this? Come on, what's this? What's this? Oh, now I gotta know. Blender, little button next to mode turns into star little dot uh, I don't think this is gonna help me find it um, maybe I can look up like look it's it's blender uh, data orange spot. I don't know. What is this dot? Not that dot. Don't know. Maybe I will simply post a picture of it. Give me a second. I'll tell the world that I have a question and I'm sure that they will answer it. What's this dot? B3D Blender. There should really be some kind of mouse over tip. I don't know why it is uh, like a secret. Um, I guess I should choose a better. Um, I picked the one where there's. Oh no, wait, that should have worked. Let's try it. Animate property. Oh, there is mouse over text. Was I just... Okay, so the problem was that I was just in the wrong window or something, and it wasn't popped up. That's fine. Whatever. 
let's get a move on. Uh, all we have to do is solidify with uh, complex mode here. Now, solidifying with the complex mode may involve um, a seam down the middle, depending on the exact setup. So that's one of those things where we're going to have to uh, keep an eye out, but it's not that big a deal even if it does happen. It's a simple fix. Now the problem is that most of these are going to have bad um, maps, just because I didn't need you anymore. Just because I haven't actually uh, unmapped them. We don't need these two. These were experimental. We'll get rid of them. Um, just mirror, solidify. Isn't this what you come by here for? You come by to see me solidify a whole bunch of things manually, one by one? That is uh, the name of the game. Just... Now, the best part is that after I'm done with this, I have to go back through and unwrap them all. Arr, yay! Oh, that one doesn't have any modifiers. That's kind of strange. Uh, all right, so I think that's all of them. Nope, here's one solidifying. So just apply that, and then we'll go in and unwrap them all. It doesn't really matter what. Um, it doesn't really matter what they're unwrapped like. I just have to have them unwrapped so they can be lit. I'm not sure I actually got this one. Yeah, I did. Okay. And I have to go through one more time after this. Um, because I didn't set this file up correctly. So uh, they've got a whole bunch of defaults that are not the best. We'll have to fix that. I think that's all of them, seems to be. So the last thing we have to go through is uh, find all the mirror modifiers and make sure they're all set up with the offset U approach. Now I think there's a fast way to do this using a multi-edit, but I keep forgetting how to do the multi-edit in Blender. It's really persnickety and I don't remember the details. Uh, it's, it's only a couple of objects anyway, so we'll just deal with it. Oh, we got another solidify that I missed. All right, back up with you. There we are. I thought that one looked a little simple. No big deal. Uh, keep going. The only issue is that if we have any that are double mirrored, we'll have to be a little bit more careful. But I don't think we do. I think everything's going to be fine. Come on. I made a video about this solution on my uh, web, my YouTube, um, just to show people how it worked. And it works fine. Uh, but of course, the instant I posted it, I got someone come by and tell me that that's not how it works in Maya or whatever he's used to, uh, and that he didn't like how it looked, and he went on and on and on about it, um, and claimed it was broken, but as you will see, it's not. It works great. So we're going to export all of this, and that should replace all of our armor tiles. And now that they've been replaced, we need to rebuild uh, them. Oh, I don't... Sure, go ahead. Me and my one viewer. The thing is, this whole setup is... Okay, so we actually do have some that are still broken. The funnel. I knew the funnel was going to be an issue. The table and the engine I'll fix uh, now, I guess. Um, but the funnel is one that I don't really get why it's busted. I also don't get why this... Oh, that was... I don't know why... I think this one's 
just... That's the vent. So why is the vent giving us difficulty? So if we take a look at the vent here... Uh, here's the flange. Oh, well, the flange is broken too, because I didn't actually see it. It's... Um, where is it? Oh, it's hidden inside something. That's fine. We'll go ahead and fix up the flange. And we got the funnel. And I knew that the funnel was going to be trouble. Because it looks strange. There's something wrong with it. I don't see... There's no mirror modifier applied to it right now. So I'm not sure why it's being grumpy. We'll export it one more time. Maybe I just missed it the first time through. Um, and this is the flange, which we'll export as well. Uh, and we want the engine one, which is the tiniest, tiniest little engine. The little engine that could. Here it is. Just uh, find that engine. Where is it? Oh, wow, it's way over there. Got to arrange things a little bit better. I'm just kind of half-assing it at the moment. So here you can see that we've got our mirror modifier. We just move that up, select everything, and smart UV project it all, and then re-export. And that should fix everything but the table. The table is still going to be broken because that is so strange that it actually crashes um, Blender. So we won't we won't deal with that. We'll just leave it there, leave it broken. We'll delete it later. All right, so in theory, that's um, ready to be rebuilt, but this one was giving us trouble, wasn't it? This vent? It was like ending up black, which usually implies that the lighting is broken, but that might have been a problem with the rebuild. It might not have counted as needing a rebuild. We still got a funnel here. Um, is that a different funnel, maybe? So there's only one H funnel. Um, and if we take a look at the light map here, I don't see any overlaps. This is definitely the one we were editing. Why is it, why is it claiming there's an, a, an overlap here? There's no overlap. Interesting, interesting. But, once again, this ended up being pitch black. Is this inside out or something let's take a look here vent 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 oh is this it just did never get unwrapped there we are it's funny that it doesn't count as an error it just doesn't work so the funnel is causing us some issues um we could use a deco widener instead, see whether that causes us some issues. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to try and apply the mirror modifier. There's a lot of layers here. I probably should have just turned on x-ray vision, but I'm too lazy. So let's go ahead and turn on mirror mods and... Boom, and then of course, Smart UV Project. And then we will export this, yeah. Grind, 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 grind. Sorry, I keep bumping the mic today. I'm having a real bad mic day. Uh, that's fine though. All right, so that fixed it. Uh, my guess is that we just happened to um, end up with a uh, uh, one of the rare situations where just quick UV unwrapping it ended up being something that mathematically didn't quite work out here in Unreal. So just doing the same thing but a little bit different worked. Um, and of course once we actually unwrap the funnel it now is lit fine. None of this lighting is any good. I'm just doing it as an experiment to, you know, to set it up, make sure everything's right, working right. So one of the core issues we've got with this setup is that it just looks like a ship. It doesn't actually have any of the functionality we might need. So if we would like to um, actually add some functionality, we have to figure out how to do that. And now obviously I could make like a ship object and uh, um, have it have stats. And we definitely should start there. So let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, we'll go ahead and create 
Is this how I want to do it? I, I need an object that contains the ship. I think that it just needs to be an empty... Like, I just need to select all this shit and make it into an object, right? That's, I think, what we want to do for now. We can leave out the, uh, the bits and bobs that aren't necessary. We can delete the rest later. It's not that big a deal. We just uh, hit that uh, convert button. Where's the convert button? Isn't there normally a turn into blueprints button? Yeah, so we're going to want to harvest the components, and we'll call this ship test. That's not how you spell it. That's more it's hip test. There we are. As an actor, um, I mean, I guess it's okay as an actor. It should be okay. The reason I'm a little bit nervous is because actors can't do shit in um, edit mode. They can only do shit in play mode. Which is not ideal, right? So if we take a look, we now have the ship test inside here. And for our ship, we can see it in this editor. Um, very, very tiny and far away for some reason. Why is it so tiny and far away? There we are. Uh, and we've got some objects in here that we don't actually want. We just have them because it's something we put in earlier. For some reason, multi-select isn't working. That's fine. So uh, what we would really like to do is to add a, um, a script, a blueprint, to this shared root. But we want it to be a specific class, right? And I don't know the best way to do that because um, we're going to have more than one ship. We don't want to... Uh, we want the ship to be a class so that we can do that. Um, do I have to... Did I have to do it differently? Did I have to descend in a different way in order to do that? I might have. Because um, I can, you know, you can see this. It's descended from actor here, but I didn't get a chance to name it anything. I don't believe that ship test is a. Does ship test count as a class? I'm a little bit confused as to exactly how this works. Well, let's go ahead and start this, and then we will try and figure out the other approach uh, in a minute here. So basically, we're going to have a couple of variables that we're going to need. For now, we're just going to go with mass, because we want to do some testing, so we should be able to just do some testing, right? Pardon me while I sniff. Uh, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually, rather than having this mass be something we manually enter, we're going to want these sub-elements to have masses, so that we can um, uh, query them for their mass. The problem here is that these objects are all part of the ship test at the moment. Um, I'm not really sure that Unreal was built for this. We'll find out soon. Basically, if I were to change up something like, oh, let's let's make this into an object with a specific class, I can't do that just by clicking here. This isn't going to end up doing anything. It's on the ship test, see? Now, I know I can do something with this. I can... I might not be able to do it here. I might have to actually re-import some of this stuff. Let's go ahead and try and build ourselves some basics here. What are you? A cube static mesh. You know what? I bet that's the reason it was so zoomed out. Yeah, so there it is. So we should be able to change the mass here, see? But we want it to calculate, and we want it to calculate based on the objects within. So we need to come up with like a ship module class and have all of these things contained within it. So to do that, we're going to start by just dropping something into the scene. Uh, and we'll we'll deal with exactly how we want it to look and stuff in a minute here. But we're going to want to change this over uh, into a harvested blueprint. A new subclass from the selected parent class. This is the problem. I don't know whether I want it to be a new subclass. I think I want it to be a container class. Replace those selected actors with an instance of the new blueprint class. Of a new blueprint class. Okay, so it is a so so the ship I created is a class. 
The question is how to reuse it later, and we'll have to figure that out. But that means that if I do this, I should be able to name it. Um, See, so this is the problem. Blueprint name. Is that the name of the class or the instance of the class or both? We'll call this um, uh, ship um, ship object test. And we are descending it from static mesh actor. I don't think we want to do that. Hmm. All right, so this is more or less what we want, but the problem is I'm not really sure what we're doing. <laughs> Let's keep at it here. Um, we obviously are going to need a mass variable. Um, that's strange. Why is components inside of the variables section? That stinks of error to me. Drew Van Camp says, back to spaceship games. Yeah, I can't get excited for anything else for some reason. So I'm going to try and just um, do some spaceship stuff for a while. There's lots of easy ways to do spaceship games, and I'm not doing any of them because apparently I am not very bright. Um, so that should be fine. Here we have the option to add in this object in specific which has a static mesh, mesh component. In theory, we can change out the static mesh component with other static mesh components. I'm not 100% sure that's what we'll want. We're going to have to try it. Right now, it's marked as movable. We'll mark it as static. Um, the whole ship should be marked as static until I'm ready. So we're going to go ahead and save and compile that. And uh, what we want to do is open up this ship. So if we were to look at this bad boy, can we select the blueprint? Um, so this is all about creating new classes. I actually want to do the opposite of that. I want to reuse the class. So I called this the ship object test, which is presumably going to be in this list here. Uh, yeah, where's my ship object? Ship test, ship object test. We're going to go ahead and drop that somewhere else. Um, can I cut this? Delete this? I just want to move it somewhere. It doesn't seem like this is something that's easy to move. That's another project. I don't want that. I just want to move it. No, that's not going to do it. Hmm. don't really know how to actually move something. That's interesting. Juvan Camp says he's big into colorful neon, so he knows what I'm talking about. Yep. So I think maybe if I create another content browser window, um, here, here's another content browser window. I think maybe I'll be able to move between these two content browser windows. So over here in Hull, we're going to just drag this over move here. Okay. So it seems to be very challenging to do that from within the content browser, but you can do it between two content browsers. Good enough for me. And then here, we're going to go back into this. I'm going to edit the blueprint. And we're going to replace some of the um, modules that we're using with that new object, specifically these bad boys, which I just happened to perfectly grab. So we'll go ahead and delete them. And we will drop in our new object. Um, ship test. Nope, nothing there. Um, I don't know how to actually add. Have you been using a particular? Nope, I haven't. I've been half-assing it. Uh, I, I mean, I've done a lot of random stuff, but using this blueprint editor, um, normally they kind of hand wave it. 
they're like, oh, it's a blueprint editor. But I, I keep expecting it, you know, things that are easy in, in Unity. Um, and I'm not sure how to do them in Unreal. And presumably they're easy and I just don't know how. For example, how do I add that thing I just created into this blueprint? In theory, it should be quite straightforward. But in practice, um, don't really know. Can I just drag it in? I mean, I can just drag it in, but I don't know why I would have to do that. Should I have an asset? Well, we'll try it that way. We'll see what happens. So here we've got the object in question, and I can set it up in the exact same way I set it up before with the standard scaling and stuff. Uh, in this case, I believe it is a 6-6. Six, six, uh, is one of these is 12? There, that's not it. Why did it do that? Why is it unlock? Nope. Nope. Interesting choice on which of these axes is this the one I thought it was. That's fine. Uh, oh, it's a 663. Okay. And you can see that it's not properly set. Even though I've got snapping turned on, it looks like it's off center. Now, my guess is that all of these ship objects have been offset by an awkward amount. Um, my bet is that the entire ship is... Yeah, look at that. It's all offset by six. What a pain. What a pain. Um, I know why it is. It's just something I don't want to have to deal with. For now, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, can we copy this location? And we'll just go ahead and paste it here and do the dragging. Just the snapping should work out. We'll have to make sure that doesn't happen in the long run. Why isn't it highlighted? Isn't it supposed to have like a rim around it to tell me what I'm looking at? I guess it doesn't for some reason. I don't really know. All right, so now we've got two of these. And these are both ship test objects, I believe I call them. Ship, ship object tests. And the ship object tests have mass, at least they should. Yeah, see there's the class. It doesn't appear that I can access their particular um, variables from here at the moment, unless I just screwed up with the variable creation, which is possible. So we're going to come on over, we'll save that, uh, and we will um, just go ahead and open up the test. Here we are. Yeah, there's the mass, and for some reason it just didn't um, didn't take. Uh, it's not it's not visible in the other object. It's only visible from here. Either way. We, uh, we can see that the problem we had is that this is not on the correct axis. It's just rotated funny. Um, in theory, we should be able to change that rotation, but I'm not seeing any dragging or dropping. Um, no, it's it's got a scale, but it doesn't have any of the other transform elements. So um, I don't really know what's going on here. We're going to have to try and figure that out. But for now... The important part is that it has a mass and it has a specific class name. Which means that in theory we can tell this ship to, uh, to calculate out its own mass. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, when we begin play, we're going to want to do a search for all of the uh, objects inside of ourself. I don't really know how to do that. Uh, get all child actors. Let's go ahead and try that there. So here we have it. Get all child actors, uh, including our descendants. Uh, presumably that means um, including recursive elements. Here we have child actors. We actually don't want to get all child actors, though. We want to get a class of our choice, all children of a class of our choice. Um, now this is letting us get specific child actors. Now, 
that's the uh, grab the uh, grab this here. That's not what we want. We want to be able to get all of the classes there, um, all that all that type of class. And we could go through all of the children and throw away the ones that aren't the right class, but I'd prefer to just get the ones that are the right class. Hmm. Oh. Get component by class? Searches the components array. I don't know what that is. Well, we can choose a, the, the correct class, ship test. Why is it not letting me do ship test class? I know that I descended from actor for the ship test class, didn't I? Ship object test. Hmm. See, there's a long learning curve here where you try and figure out what's going on, and this shit doesn't help. We really need to be able to hide large swaths of this shit, because there's, there's no reason why I want to see that giant list. Um, there we are. Let's see if I can get some more stuff here. Uh, enum stuff, switch stuff, struct stuff, async stuff. Get actor of class, get all actors of class in the world. I don't want to get all the actors of class in the world. I think that gets our class. I want to get actors of class within ourselves. Get all widgets of class. Let me go ahead and just take a look here. Maybe there's maybe there's a, an easy way to do it. Uh, Unreal Blueprint get all children of class. Oh, he's asking the opposite thing. Um, no, they're talking about descendants here. Uh, Everybody's asking how to get each of the descendants, um, and I don't want that. I want all of our... I don't want the child class. I want the child of this parent that is a class, if you see what I mean. Um, I guess we'll just do get all actors and then cast them. So uh, when we have the child actors, we want to hmm. just go ahead and see what happens. Not really sure. We're going to go ahead and save it, and then we're going to shrink it down and hit play. Oh, I am a, a jet. Um, but we want that, that ship. Ship test. Uh, and if we take a look, child actors has two array elements. Ship object test 1 and ship object test 45. That's these two. Um, how do I jump out of the, I need to, I need to jump out of the pawn here. Uh, 
I don't know how to return back to um, being able to look around the the mo the, the, the scene. Uh, there's a way to do it. I've done it before. It's one of those things where if you know how to do it, it's easy, and if you don't, you you can't do it at all. Well, I mean, in theory, I guess we could, like, try and look around. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that. And, oh, oh, I wanted to pause. That did not work out. I hit uh, print screen instead of pause. All right, so um, this isn't actually letting it be selected. There's something about this there where it's not... It's clearly part of the ship. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost sure that these ship object tests are in fact the pieces of the ship that are um, giving us grief. They're the things we actually want to get. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, why would it only get two classes? Why would it only get these two? Aren't the meshes... Uh, maybe Mesh isn't descended from Actor. Why, if we get them, why would it split them off into their own object? Oh, is this because I said expose variable or something similar? See how it says um, gen variable ship object test C cat one? I think that that's... I don't really know what what's going on here. Um, okay, so I think that that is here. Th there, this is them. Look, at there's act they're actually right here in the class. Uh, let's delete the whole placer. We don't need that. So, what are these? Oh, you know what it is. The ship test has something stupid in it. Give me, give me a second here. Um, I actually placed a an editor that, that's almost invisible, or that is invisible. Um, and that's why we have this really zoomed out view. Here it is. So we don't actually want this plane in here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cut it. We don't mind if it's in here, though. So can we paste it in here? No. Okay, that's fine. We'll just leave it, leave it gone for now. Um, so you can see the ship object tests are showing up as sub-objects within this blueprint. And here in the sub-object, I can't actually s click them. I don't really know what's going on here. Now, presumably, yeah, so these are the correct objects. Uh, they're named something stupid, but we can fix that. The problem here is that I can't select them, and for some reason in play mode, they become distinct objects separate from the ship. I'm not sure what's going on here. Yeah, this is it. Uh... Oh, is it because this is not static? Let's go ahead and, and mark this as static then. For now, at least. Static. Is everything marked as static? No, of course not. Um, what I'd like to do is mark everything as static. Can I... I don't know how to do that. I'll just select everything. They're all static now. Except I think that maybe these first bits aren't. God, this is really obnoxious. Static. Alright, exciting stuff. Now, I don't know whether or not that's going to actually make any difference, so let's go ahead and check here. Um, Alright, so that did. It's, it's actually staying inside the ship now because now they're, they're the correct amounts of static. So basically it moved the objects out of the ship because the um, 
the ship was more mobile than its children. So it was like, okay, well, the children aren't allowed to move, but the ship is. Let's take the children out of the ship, uh, which is not a bad decision. It was very confusing, and I wish there had been some way to see that happening. But now that I know it's up, I'm okay. All right. So here you can see we've got the two objects in question. We've got a mass. All we really need to do is cast these into um, the correct class and see whether or not they are that class. And if they are that class, we will want to add them up. So we've got all of these child actors. We want to do a loop here. And now, presumably, there is some kind of loop for each loop. Here it is. Just grab that. Um, and here's the array element, which is a class. And what we're going to want to do is see whether or not it is the correct class for us. Here we're getting class. Now, in theory, we should be able to compare this to another class. Um, I get the feeling this isn't the best way to do it. So here's get assets by class, get asset data for all assets with this applied class. That sounds close to like what I want, but I bet it doesn't do what I want. I bet it it doesn't work. Here's get components. And uh, let's go ahead and look for that ship test class. Why isn't it showing up? What's going on here? Why can't I get the class I want? Does, does the ship test class not exist? The ship doesn't show up in here either. Um, if we were to grab this, here's our ship. See how they're named something completely different in here? That's really unnerving. Get class. I shouldn't have to do this, though. There's probably something... Wait, can I? Ah, look at that. Look at that. There we are. OK. So as we get a, the ship object test, we should be able to get the variable mass. Get mass. Boom, like so. Uh, and of course, that we will add together for our mass. So over here at the beginning, we're going to set our mass. So we'll just uh, drag this in, set mass. We'll set it to zero, like so. And then over here, we're going to set it to itself plus this. So we have an add here. Uh, got get. Add. Oh, this is a this is not add. <laughs> That's like a dictionary add. That's not what we want. Here's a set add. Where's our math? Hello, basic math. Why is it so hard to find basic math? Um, is it not called add? The fuck. Oh, it's called float plus float. Okay, whatever. I can live with it. Come on. Did I miss it by a hair here? Okay. 
there we are. So that should, in theory, come back with 10. Let's find out. See, right now it says 5.7. Hit play and pause it. Select the ship or not. Um, oh, stop that. Where is the ship? Ship test. 10. So that is exactly how we can do it. There are lots of other ways to do it, but this is the most robust um, in terms of uh, just being able to spawn in ships that are pre-built. Um, in a lot of other situations, we might have problems with, uh, um, you know, for example, we could add it into the ship registry every time an object is added. Um, but if we do that, that kind of presupposes that adding the object is constant, is something that could happen at any time. Uh, I don't really know how to do it either. Um, really all you would do is you would trigger this again. So really we should make this like a function that we can trigger whenever we want, rather than something that only happens on spawn. But we're just playing around. We're just trying to get a feel for it, right? So now the question is... Can we use the shame? The shame. Can we use the same ship test object uh, class? This here, ship object test. Can we use the same class for other kinds of things? Or other kinds of of materials. Um, so, for example, we've got this banana-shaped thing over here. Uh, if we go and we decide that we're going to try to get that banana shape. I'm sure that guy has no problems at all. I'm sure you could hear that, a motorcycle at 200 decibels. Um, where is my banana shape? It should be a nose, right? It should be like SMH nose. How am I missing this? Oh, there it is. It's called a full nose, that's why. Okay, so we drop this in here, and if we were to change the blueprint, then uh, what we really want to do is we don't want to, we don't want to create a new blueprint class. We want to create the same blueprint class, right? So if we were to do this, for example, we could try and get that ship test class. Here it is. But that would create a descendant, which would mean that every single time we did this, we would have another... I mean, there's no technical reason why that's illegal. It's just that I don't need a million classes. I need a million objects of one class. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure this works, and then we'll whine about it afterwards. We'll call this um, ship object nose. Here's our ship object nose. Once again, we can't really move this around. We'll figure out exactly how to deal with this in a minute. There's some other things we want to do. We're going to go ahead and make this have a different mass. Um, Mass, 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 mass. Where's our mass? Why don't we have a mass? Ah, here we are. Right? It should be here. Where's our mass? There it is. On a seven. Come back over here into the ship test, and then we're going to put in a nose. This nose here, we'll want to replace this with a nose of our choice. I don't really know how to do that, so I guess we're just going to drag that nose of our choice in. Um, ship object nose. Boom. Where'd it go? Why is it... The fuck? Because I had that selected. It was a sub-object? That's not right. Ship object nose. There we go. The nose, nose. That's not the right object. What?
All right, so the static mesh component appears to be bound to the, the base. Um, let's go ahead and try to do this another way. So if we were to add in an empty actor here, just boop, at zero, 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 um, we would want to convert that empty actor into a new blueprint, which we are going to call um, ship object base. And uh, we want to create a new, yeah, that's fine. We'll create a new like that. Uh, and now that that's empty, we should be able to put whatever we want into it, in theory. Let's go ahead and create that mass variable again. Just switch it over to being a float, mark it as editable, and expose it, because why not? Um, save and compile. Uh, and now what we're going to want to do is descend from that. So if we were going to find that empty ship object base, there's a ship object nose, there's a ship test, ship base. Um, here it is. But for some reason, it's not showing up in the assets. There it is. OK, so it's in a different directory. That's fine. So here's our ship object base, right? It's in the base section. We're going to move that into hulls, move. Um, and here's our ship object base. If we copy and then paste it, we can try and make this our ship object nose. And let's see what happens once we start to edit it, because this is the question. So um, the mass is actually something we're going to deal with a little bit more complexly because it's going to be modified by the scale, obviously. But for now, we're just trying to get it working. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to edit this blueprint. And we're going to want to add in a nose. So um, excuse me. Is this 6, 6, or 1, 1, 1, 1? OK, that's fine. So there we've got a nose. We're going to save that, compile that, close this, open this. OK, so this is the ship object nose. Here's a ship object base, ship object test. Yeah, so look, the ship object base, the original, now has a nose in it. All right, so I think what that means is that there is something I don't understand about the way that this stuff works. There's something I don't understand about um, about the way classes work in this world. I don't really understand exactly what's up. I crashed Unreal. All right, well, give me a second, everybody. Oh, that's right. Unreal has a... Uh... Wait, I have a... I put it on the desktop? I desk ZBrush. There's Unreal. We'll go ahead and put that into our start menu. Put that up there. Open this. Oh no, it might not have saved anything. <sighs> yes, could you stop popping shit up? I'm trying to... Why isn't it cladding? No, why is it... Um, it's not... Okay, that was weird. It was really, really not letting me click on anything. Very, obno very obnoxious. Uh, here we are. So we're back into this ship. Um, but this ship it has been reverted, as you can see. It's no longer the object that we created. It is now the loose leaf ship again. No big deal. We'll just create a new level here, a new empty level. We'll put the ship in here for testing's sake. Um, the only question is, do I have the ship object test or the ship test? Here it is. So I'll just drop this ship test in here. 
and you can see that it's got a bad blueprint. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to delete this ship test. And we're going to create a new one. So we're going to go ahead and place another empty actor here at 000. We're going to create a blueprint, uh, a new subclass, which we're going to call ship test. We're going to see whether or not this breaks because I just deleted the ship test. It might not actually be deleted. There we go. So uh, obviously, we are once again going to need a mass. And the sun is shining straight into my eyeballs. Hold on. All right, so uh, we're going to have to recreate that blueprint we created, but it wasn't a big deal. It's pretty easy once we know how to do it. Um, but what we don't know how to do is uh, get this hull set up to work. You can see the ship object base has a nose cone in it again. I know I deleted you. Maybe it didn't save last time. Sorry, I'm looking at the nose here. It's not giving me the ability to edit the mass. There it is. Huh. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's all good. Um, except for I have to actually save it, don't I? Save. Compile. So what we're going to try and do here is create ship, dot, ship object bases that are derived from um, the kind of content we want. So if we go over into the whole section and we grab that nose, I guess we didn't have to go in here. We could just type nose and drop it in. Drop the nose in here um, and then put it at 0, 0, 0. We should be able to convert this over into a new ship object base which we will call ship object nose. Ship object nose is already in use, so we're going to cancel that. We're going to delete ship object nose. And try that again. Boom. Bow. All right, so now we have a ship object nose, but it doesn't have a mass. No, it does. It does have a mass, it just doesn't show up over here under the variables section. Interesting, interesting. So apparently over here and under variables, this doesn't show you the variables of the class you descended from. It shows you the variables that you've added to this particular subclass, which is great, except for the fact that I don't actually need a subclass, do I? I just need the base class. Let me see whether or not I can figure out how to do this. Unreal. Um, blueprint. Same class. <laughs> Reusing the same class with different. No. I think that everybody just takes children classes. I think it's all just child classes from here to the end of time. I'll have to try and keep that in mind. It's an interesting approach. It's not necessarily terrible. But uh, here we're going to close that down. And we're going to check out... Uh, well, first let's go ahead and... Why did it... Okay, well, we're going to bring that second window back so that we can do stuff again. Um, and we're going to want to go into holes over here and into... Here, where's our nose? Nose. Uh, ship object nose. In here, please. And so now we've got a ship object nose. And if we go into our ship test, we should be able to drop those noses in. Although, 
So here's our nose, just drop it in. Here's another nose, drop it in. Rotate one of these noses. Oh, I put it inside the other nose. I don't want the noses to be inside of each other. No, wrong, sorry. There we are. And uh, we're gonna wanna rotate that around. Come on, rotate. Nose, the nose, nose. And then we'll drop in the ship object base and make sure it's not a nose. <laughs> Hello? It is not. Hooray! So this works. This works fine. Um, that's going to be great. It's going to work fine. Uh, let's go ahead and redo the ship test blueprint again. So the way we do that is uh, we want to get all the children. Hmm. There we are. I had dragged from this. That was the problem. Uh, and then we're going to take these child actors. We're going to do a four each. There we go. And just drop this in here. And then we're going to take this array element and cast it to a ship object base. To boom. Um, boom. Uh, we're not going to be able to do it this way um, in the long run. I don't want every single hull piece to have its own permanent class associated with it. So in the long run, what we may have to do is create a hull class that's specifically just for hulls. And what we'll do with there is we'll substitute in um, hulls, specifically. Uh, I'll have to think about it. There's lots of pieces to this puzzle. And here we're going to get the mass. And then down here we're going to get mass and set mass and open your eyes, please. Um, and we are going to use plus. Can I just type in plus? Uh, I can. Float plus float. Mass. Mass. I guess we should do it this way. But, of course, as before, we need to set that to zero before we even get started. Yeah, um... Ah, yes, that's correct. I think that's all we needed to do. Let's go ahead and just give it a shot. So, we'll hit play, and then we will select our ship test. There it is, mass four. So, it's working. It's working, everybody. I figured it out. Hooray! So, that's what I wanted to get done today, and all one of you uh, who joined me uh, for my very boring adventures, see you next time, or not. I have a feeling what's going to be exciting and fun for everybody is uh, modeling. <laughs> Logic, not so great, right? I'll try and do some of it off-screen. Bye! Uh, where's the stop button?